And hello everyone, welcome once again. This is Logan and this is Decode Your Reality. And today we're doing one on the classic 1985 movie, Back to the Future, starring Michael J. Fox and company. This is Back to the Future Decoded. Now I'm not sure if you've done any research into this movie, but there is a ton of symbolism in this movie. Um, you know, and of course we're talking about time travel. That's what we're talking about. Time travel, back to the future. Now, I believe it's totally possible. I believe that they've been doing it for some time now. And this movie, of course, shares that with us. And we're going to get into all that kind of stuff. Before I get into this presentation, I want to show you the systems I'm going to be using for decoding all these words. And, you know, you have science in here and stuff like that. So, you know, number one, I'm going to be using science. We're going to be using the atomic weights and these elements. Each element is numbered. Zinc is 30. Neodymium is 60. Um, and, you know, they have the personalities of these, uh, these elements. You know, the personalities are atomic weights. And that's how we measure these. But we're going to be introducing these into the decoding aspects of this presentation. We're also going to be using the ancient tarot system. This is the fool card, the card 0 and 22. You need to understand these systems, by the way. If you don't, this is going to be probably tough for you to follow along. Um, numerology is going to play a big role in this. Not just the numbers 1 through 9, but the number 0. You need to know what the number zero is as well. The God force. Pi, 3.14. Perfect circle. That's important. The numbers one, zero through nine. And then, of course, yes, gematria, the coding of words into numbers. Each letter is represented by a number. Now, it's important to understand that there are multiple ciphers. You know, each one of these is different. English ordinal, as you'll notice uses the numbers 1 through 26. 1 is A, B is 2, C is 3, all the way up to Z is the number 26. But then if you use the ancient Chaldean system, supposedly, allegedly, the oldest of its kind, this one uses the numbers 1 through 8. And, you know, it's all different. Septenary is the only system using the numbers 1 through 7, and it acts like a mirror, 1 through 7, back down to 1, and then back to 7, back down to 1. The full reduction, which is the numbers 1 through 9, and uh, we already went over the English ordinal. So these are the basic four that I use. I don't get into all the other reverse. And I, it's easy to make connections using multiple ones. Try using one or two. Get your foundation built if you want to decode from. Right now, I've been heavily involved with the Chaldean using that one, and you'll notice in this presentation, that's pretty much what I'm using is the Chaldean. So let's get right down into it. Um, you'll notice, uh, you know, obviously I got... The ancient Demiurge, Jehovah, the ancient Hebrew God, Yahweh, YHVH, I think it's all the same. This is just a New Age name for him, Jehovah. Um, you know, we got the Great Pyramid here, and that has everything to do with time travel. The ancients knew how to time travel. The location of the pyramid is important. And of course, you know, during in the movie Back to the Future, what makes time travel possible? The flux capacitor. The flux capacitor, and then, you know, 1.21 gigawatts. If you've seen the movie, you know how important that is. We're going to get into that as well. So let's let's go around and kind of go through all this kind of stuff. Let's start off with Jehovah. Why is he important? He keeps coming up in my research. And Jehovah is a three-syllable word, Jehovah, 61212. But that equals the number 30. Now keep that in the back of your mind as we go through this, because 30 is really important. Three stands for the creative mind, and then the zeros, the God force behind it. That's why the, you know, the Freemasons, that's why 33 is so important, because 33 is the double creative mind. That's why it's important. But anyway, Jehovah's a 61212. And when we break these down and add up the atomic weights, carbon's 12, magnesium's 24, 12, 24, 24, equals the number 60, which is half. Of 30. And that's important because the word 8-8. Eight, 8 is really important, but 8 is a 30. 8 is the number that eats itself, the infinity sign. It just so happens to equal 30, which equals Jehovah. And 60 is connected to the element neodymium. Now, this is really important when it comes to the Great Pyramid of Giza because the location, the geographical location 
of the Great Pyramid of Giza is 29 north, 31 east. 29 plus 31 equals the number 60. That's why in the movie The Matrix, Keanu Reeves' name was Neo, as in neodymium. This is what's used to make magnets, by the way, which is used in electromagnetism. Very, very important. Very, very important. Let's, let's digress really quick and kind of go into the Great Pyramid of Giza because the 7-Eleven is very, very important in the whole structure of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Um, and why do I say 7-Eleven? Because the base from one point to one point, there's four of those, equals 230 meters, 440 Egyptian royal cubits, which is 756 feet, or 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, very, very important. Very, very important. The coordinates again, 29, 31, but you'll notice that when we go to the decimal points, you have 29.97, 29 of course is 11, 97 is seven. So you have the 11, seven for the actual coordinates when you break it down. Really, really fascinating. Really, really fascinating. So getting back to this, Great Pyramid of Giza, 7-Eleven, the base, 60, neodymium. And we link that up to gigawatt. We link that up to gigawatt because if you remember, Doc had to come up with a way to get Marty back to 1985. And he said, a bolt of lightning is the only thing that can produce 1.21 gigawatts. A bolt of lightning. And gigawatt just so happens to equal the number 88 in the English ordinal system. Again, 8, 8, 8 is a 30, a double 30, 60, neodymium, 30, 30, Jehovah, 30. Really, really fascinating. The word demiurge equals the number 30. The Gnostics talk about the demiurge keeping us trapped in this reality. Is Jehovah the demiurge? It's quite possible. It's quite possible that Jehovah is Saturn. And Saturn keeps us in this loop. Saturn, number 21, number 26, the 8, the 3. It's all connected. It's all connected. Going back up to the lightning bolt. Let's zoom in here. A bolt of lightning, as Doc Brown said. 1.21 gigawatts. Look at what the word lightning bolt breaks down to. Lightning is a 30, just like Jehovah. And then bolt equals 16. And then we get into the ancient tarot system. What's the 16th card? The tower card. If you, fo if you follow any kind of Taoism, you'll know that the Hindu god Shiva, Lord Shiva, Shiva equals 16. Destruction, regeneration, lightning bolt coming down and destroying that tower. Isn't that fascinating? And then we go further. Zinc, which is the 30th element, which is tied to Jehovah, which is tied to lightning. Zinc equals 16, just like Bolt, tied to the tower card. Look at that, full circle. And we're not using multiple ciphers. Ladies and gentlemen, just using Chaldean here to tie this all together. Now again, what makes time travel possible, the flux capacitor. And, you know, capacitor is a noun. So we name it the flux. We could have named it Logan capacitor or Larry capacitor or Mary capacitor, but it's the flux capacitor. And it just so happens capacitor equals 30, just like Jehovah, just like the element zinc. Now, it's interesting because zinc's atomic weight is 65.38, and we break that down in numerology, we get the 1111. I'm not going to go into that any further, but I thought that's fascinating. It's a, it, it's a mirror of itself, 1111. Is this where the buck stops? The number 30. Well, if you know the elemental chart, the number 31 is gallium, which is the reversal of 13, which is aluminum, which is the death card. Keep those things in mind. Now again, flux is number 22. 22 is the fool card. 
the card after the world card, card 21, the fool stepping out into the unknown, flux capacitor, makes time travel possible. Now we're going to get really into the meat of this now because I'm going to get into some stuff that's groundbreaking. We're going to touch on this flux capacitor. Let's show the flux capacitor. And there it is. The flux capacitor. You've probably seen this before in the movie Back to the Future. This is actually taken from the movie Back to the Future. The big standouts for this is how fast did the DeLorean have to get to while the lightning bolt came down from the clock tower? 88 miles an hour. Gigawatt, 88. 88 is what Marty had to get to. Isn't that fascinating? What are the odds of this connecting like that? Now the most important, the big standout here is the shape of this flux capacitor. If we had to tie it to a letter, it'd be the letter Y. The letter Y. And that's why I planted it right on this pyramid. I believe the as above, so below. The pyramid is the so below and the as above is right here. It's your upside down pyramid. And the point right in the middle is where the power comes in. 29 and 31 is 60. The location, the X marks the spot, is right there. Neodymium, 60. 144,000. 12 tribes of Judah. 12 times 12 is 144. But anyway, here's your upside down pyramid. Right there. We can even say this is a battery. Positive, negative. Completing the charge. X marks the spot. Here's the Y. As above, so below. This pyramid has its connecting rod right here, and it goes right through the center of the pyramid. Now, if you know anything, if you've done any research on the pyramid, the numbers 1 through 10, number 1 at the top, 10 at the bottom, those add up to the number 55. I'm not going to get into that today, but that has great significance to the decoding of the pyramid. But anyway, here's your energy coming in. And why is, it the sh why is it in the shape of Y? Well, the Demiurge, Jehovah, quite possibly could be yod Hey vah Hey Y-H-V-H. And of course, it starts off with the letter Y. Letter Y is number one. Number one in numerology is fire. Number one in numerology is leadership, beginnings, starting point. Y. Flux capacitor, Y. See how that just fits right on top of that pyramid, connecting the other pyramid from the as above? Could the Y, could the Yod be the upside down pyramid, the as above? So I got the lightning bolt in there, connecting these two points. Now let's go a little bit further. Let's add in a clock. Now why did I add in the clock? Because we all know that there's 12 hours in a day. I'm sorry, 24 hours in a day, but half of that's 12. But the, the clock holds the 12. We have the 12 tribes of Judah, the 12 zodiac signs, the 12 apostles. 12 is a very significant number. I placed it here because that's what makes time travel possible. It's inside these coordinates here. Now, if you'll notice, what I picked up on is this flux capacitor, this Y. What is it pointing to on the numbers? When we break it out and we bring the green in, you'll see the Y is the 1116, 1116. And again, I, I mentioned time travel, 117. Did I not mention the 117? 29 is 11, 97 is a seven, 117. If you remember the base of the pyramid was 756 feet, 711. Now we're gonna go even further in that. There was an article that came out, Avengers 4 movie. A lot of things come out in the movies, as we know. We're talking about Back to the Future. But 11-7, we're talking about the 11-7. So this article is interviewing this guy, Frank Grillo, who is crossbones. <clears throat> he was in Captain America, the Winter Soldier, Frank Grillo. He was on a UFC unfiltered podcast, and they're interviewing the guy. And he says, crossbones makes an appearance in the next Avengers movie, but it's a flashback. He says, yeah, I'm allowed to say whatever I want because I'm never doing another Marvel movie. Perhaps that's why he's saying this. I don't know. But Jim Norton, the guy who's interviewing him, says, why not? And Frank says, 
because I'm 117 years old. What are the odds of him saying that he's 117 years old? And they're talking about time travel. They're talking about time travel in this article. That's what they're talking about right here. Time travel. What are the odds of him mentioning 117? I'd say really good when it comes to time travel. Great Pyramid. 756 feet, 711, the actual coordinates, 117. 117. Flux capacitor. This is pointing to the 11, the 1, and the 6. 11, and we follow the clock. 1 plus 6 in numerology is 7. 11, 7. Time travel. Time travel. And then we add in one other element, and that is the ancient Egyptian Ankh. And look at how perfect it fits up right here. And if we follow the 11 down to the 1, down to the 6, we get 11, 7. But look at where it's in. It's, it's following the shape of the Ankh. Granted, it's pointing to the 9 and the 3, but the actual following of this is the 11-7. And we know that the ancient Egyptians have tons of hieroglyphs showing this Ankh because they knew what time travel was. The 11-7 is what makes time travel possible. Is this our way out? If we're under the rule of the Demiurge, if it is indeed Yohe Vahe, if it is indeed YHVH, the new age name of Jehovah, is this our way out? the 11-7, the flux capacitor. What makes time travel possible? Is it the 11-7? I'd like to think so. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. This is Logan, Decode Your Reality. Until next time.